Hello you beautiful people and welcome back to another Hiker Plays video. Today we are going to be doing our tank review. Thank you so much for the feedback you gave on the DPS review. It is time to look at our tanks. And who are these tanks? Well, right now we're going to use Big Mom as our example. But in theory you could be using Kaido, you could be using Kuma, you could be using Crocodile. And the list of tanks do go on. So just some of the top ones are Sengoku, Kaido, Crocodile. Uh, Kuma, probably Frankie, Buggy, like you've got so many options. Anyway, right, all of the tanks are going to be running pretty much the same set, and that is the Murakumo set. Uh, this is going to give you the four-piece set, which is in battle, 10% HP up and 10% damage reflect, and then later on it's also healed by 2%, um, and it's a 10% chance to heal by 2% when receiving damage, which is actually huge because you'll be healing a lot of damage over time. Um, with your substats, you want to be looking at HP percentage. So you want your tanks to be super, super healthy. Naturally, uh, defense and HP are your, sort of your two main stats that you're going to be working on. HP percentage just gives you these really inflated numbers, and I absolutely love the idea of HP percentage. I'm specifically keeping damage, uh, sorry, defense a little lower um, and really hammering home HP percentage, and you'll see why. Uh, it is to try and utilize the reflect as much as I can. So, again, with Helmet, we're going with full HP percentage. Now, my armor is HP percentage just because I haven't leveled it up as much. Later on, after level 10, you're going to get access to crit resistance, and I do recommend taking the crit resistance. And then with Boots, again, you're going to get crit damage resistance. I do recommend taking those at level 10, but in reality, it's sort of up to you. Maybe you do one piece rat damage resistance, one piece uh, one with HP percentage. Because again, we want to try and keep that HP as high as possible. So that's what we're going to be running with. That's our substats. Now, going into amulets, if we go into, not the information button, but the recast button, and then the information button, the amulet uh, power-ups that I'm going to be taking, so the, the ones that are the most important for me is tough. I love the idea of tough, 15% damage down across battle. Fantastic. Uh, reflect is another one. So if you come into the special category... Um, and then Reflect is down here. So when in battle, chance to gain 20% Reflect. Bearing in mind, our set's also going to be Reflecting. So this is why we're having a high HP threshold, but not really caring too much about the defense stat as much. So we can be Reflecting as much as we can. Uh, we want to be looking at uh, Shelter, which is in Survival again. I should have done this in order. Um, which is, again, damage down for, uh, for the first 10 seconds. So what it's going to do is anyone that's going to give you that early burst, you're sort of mitigating by having two sets of damage downs. And then right at the end, I really do like patch, and I think patch is here, which is, again, healing for 1.25% uh, per second. Bearing in mind, we're going to have those really inflated HP values. 1.25 is actually a lot of HP, so we'll be healing a lot of HP per second. We're going to be reflecting a bunch of that, and on top of that, we're trying to mitigate damage as well. So we're trying to not take as much damage so that, you know, we're able to reflect more over time. Um, other things you could consider is Ghost. I do like Ghost. Uh, so when killed, there's a 35% chance to be he uh, revived. Like, this is never a bad idea. Uh, especially with tanks unlike Big Mum who can't revive. Uh, very, very useful. Just, just makes you more sticky. And then lastly, Affinity. Um, let me see if I can find affinity. I think it's on the survival. I made a note of everything that I like. So here we go. Again, heals up to 25%. Can be useful. It can be useful. Um, but I would say the first four are definitely the first four you want to be going for. Now, with amulets, you can get a temper value. So if we actually switch over to, uh, I guess, Marco, because he's actually got the upgraded value, uh, upgraded amulet, what we can do is we can... Uh, go here and or is it on recast I need to go into that um, you know it'd be easy if I just show it over here so you can get temper temper stats and the temper stats we want to be going for and this is I think after two star on an amulet is anything that does damage down and typically the one I would go for first is damage from shooters you, you want to try and do damage mitigation from shooters as your first why in particular shooters so GARP is a shooter, so taking less damage from people's GARPs is a fantastic idea, since everyone pretty much runs him. Um, other ones that you could consider are soldiers, because most people will be running the th like things like Whitebeard, 
and things like Ashurazoro long term. So soldiers would also incorporate those two. And then right at the end, you do have things like assassins. So you could be mitigating against Yamato or magical magical magicians and fighters. Pretty much anything that does DPS are the tempers that you want to sort of be negating against. I would say priority would be shooter to try and negate as many garps as we can. And that, that concludes the part on amulets. So that covers amulets. Now runes, runes are interesting because with tank runes, typically, I mean, we'll start with the upper echelons. There really is two, two or three tank runes that you could go. The best one is going to be shepherd. At least this is the one I like the most. Um, and what it does, is it's just going to heal your allies and give them a shield. It's a quite a supportive rune, but it does come with 30% HP buff and it gives you haki dam damage down. So a lot of these pay-to-win guys are going to have lots of haki damage. So having 35% damage down, absolutely fantastic. And giving your team a shield just improves their survivability as well. I like bringing this. I mean, you could in theory put it on another support as well, like on Marco. But on a tank, it works just as well. HP lock, there definitely is a world where HP lock works. Personally, for Big Mom, I would say this is the worst out of the three that I'm going to be saying. But it's, you know, it's a pretty cool rune. And again, it has the same passives. And the last is actually the newest of the runes. Um, and what this does is it will debuff immediately and remove all debuffs and then stun nearby allies, uh, sorry, enemies uh, for two seconds. And I think the stun and then you've got the rage recovery as well makes this, in theory, the second best rune for a tank. So the best rune for a tank would be Shepherd. I would say the second best would be Exorcist. Again, you've got the really, really nice passives. So... I, if, if you have if you have the ability, grab Shepherd. If not, grab Exorcist. Both would work absolutely fine. HP Lock is if you somehow did have HP Lock, didn't have the other two, just as good to stick on, but, you know, isn't the one that I would go for. In terms of red runes, uh, we have opted for Traction. Uh, the Traction rune is absolutely great because it pulls the enemy, the furthest enemy, closer to you. So it pretty much does what Crocodile's ability is, and I think Kaido does it as well. But on someone like Big Mum, we now get that ability through a rune, which is really, really nice. Um, so I would personally go something like Attraction Rune. You could also go for a Cure Rune if you really, really wanted. And what that's going to do is it's just going to make you a little bit more sort of helping to your team. Personally, again, I would stick that on a support. Um, if you have access to both, Traction just fits the tank better. Now, in terms of yellow and purple runes, I don't have names for them. But again, you could go for things like Shepherd. You could pretty much, you, you just want anything that heals. So heals your team, heals your friends, or, you know, things like that. Or anything that heals allies is very, very good game. And it, it's going to be beneficial for you. So I recommend just going anything with a heal. We're not going to sit and name every single rune out there. Um, to wrap this last bit up, we are going to look at inventions, dials, and Vivra cards. So we'll start with inventions. Of course, the watering can is a good option. Um, if you can chuck the watering can on a support, just as good. Um, especially if you can get your hands on one of these octopuses. Octopus on your main tank is always, always a nice idea. So octopus on the main tank and then throw like the watering can on a support. Fantastic. Otherwise, both work. So I would go either Octopus or Watering Can for your tank. In terms of Vivra cards, we're going to be going Moria, which again, I would, I could, you could easily put this on a support, um, but it can be on a support or your main tank. And then uh, Thor, I really, really recommend this on a main tank. Uh, when the battle begins, you get a 30% max health shield. It's, you, you just become such a menace with this at like on a you know 20 30 mil hp um tank it's just it's just fantastic so thor enel thor definitely a tank um vivra card and then lastly we have dials so dials pretty much it's the opposite of what we're going to suggest for the dps believe it or not so the best dial in the game right now for tanks recovery dial of course it is because it's going to give you the 20 percent hp up when you're attacked, it's going to be dispelling debuffs, healing you. And bearing in mind, we've picked up runes that do very similar things as well. This is just unreal. And you also get damage reduction. Uh, you also get a bunch of other things. So best best rune in the game right now for, the, for tanks. The other two runes that you could be looking at, the Endure rune. This is the more free-to-play version of those runes. 
Um, this is the one that I would recommend if you can only get a red rune. 100% this is the one you should be getting. Uh, so when in battle, your HP will be up. And when casting your ultimate, you'll gain 15% control resistance. Pretty standard stuff. It's a very nice rune. The buffer rune, not so good. Uh, so when the enemy casts an ultimate, so again, you're relying on the enemy to cast an ultimate, uh, it grants 10% damage reduction to the weakest ally for 6 seconds. Again, I would say this is more of a support rune. I think for your tank, you kind of want the other one. So if you have to pick it, pick this. But I'm sure you could grab the Endure rune. Pick the Endure rune over the other one, over the buffer rune. So pretty much if you can afford it, recovery rune. If not, you want to go Endure, and then you want to go buffer last. The other ones are all for DPS, so I wouldn't touch them. Guys, if you enjoyed this guide, and if you have any questions on tank, feel free to comment down below. I'm loving the comment numbers that are coming in with this new guide series, and I'm loving the like numbers. So keep that up. Boys, you're, you're really letting me know that you like these. So the support one will come in the upcoming days. It's a little bit harder to make, but that is the next video that we're going to be trying to push, is the support video. Um, we're probably going to have to break it down. It's probably going to be a longer video because there's different types of supports in this game, uh, whether they're healing supports, whether they're actually like damage buffing supports. And you're going to build them slightly differently. Unfortunately, unlike DPS and tanks, it's not a one-size-shoe-fits-all. But we're going to be covering it anyway, and then we're going to slowly start breaking into maybe character builds in particular. Let me know what you guys want to see next. But boys, thank you all, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.